and welcome to today's webinar. We are talking about engaging learners with virtual reality today. My name is Mary Carnahan, and I am the Learning Resources Specialist with the Department of Education, and I am your webinar host and producer today. I'm going to cover a few housekeeping things, and then I will move on to our presenters, and they can share um, how they're using virtual reality in their classrooms. All of the lines, except for our presenters, have been muted. Please keep your line muted throughout the call to minimize background noise and distractions. Please use the chat box that you should see on the right side of your screen to ask questions and make comments throughout the call. Our presenters will be watching those questions and we'll make sure that all of your questions get answered by the end of the hour. But also, uh, feel free to share any ideas that you have, any things that you might want to do in your classroom or things that you're already doing um, in regards to virtual reality. And I am recording this webinar and I will post it to our YouTube channel next week along with our other, all of the other webinars that we have done and recorded over the years. I will share that URL a little bit later in the call um, so you can watch for that. And I will also share a link to that um, when I send out your PGPs. And you will each, um, everyone who is um, participating live today will earn one PGP. So I will send those out to the email addresses with which you registered um, tomorrow or by the end of the week. So we are in the middle of Indiana Digital Learning Month, and this is we started this several years ago to coincide with Digital Learning Day, which is February 27th this year. But we like to spend more time um, celebrating Digital Learning Month. So the um, website is there listed um, on the screen. You can't link on it, or you can't can't click on it, but. Um, that is the URL. Again, I will share that in the chat in a bit. Um, but I just wanted to share a couple of other things that we have going on this month um, around um, the celebration of digital learning. We are starting a short book club that will start next week, um, February 17th. We will be reading Don't Ditch That Tech by Matt Miller, Nate Ridgway, and Angelia Ridgway. Um, that will be a five-week book club, and that will be worth up to 10 PGPs, two PGPs for each week of participation. And you can get information um, on that from our Digital Learning Month page. Um, we also have another webinar the last um, Tuesday of the month. We're going to be doing a digital tool smackdown, Tuesday, February 25th at the same time, 4 p.m. Eastern. And last but not least, all month long, please um, tweet using the Indiana Digital Learning Month hashtag and share how you, what, what digital learning looks like in your classroom um, on a daily basis. So we would love to see what you are doing. And now I want to move on to our presenters. We have three, three presenters today. We have Chris King, who is a kindergarten teacher um, from Delphi Schools, and he's going to be talking about virtual or um, virtual reality in the elementary. And then Sarah Wilking from Wayne Township will be talking about uh, virtual reality in the secondary classrooms. And then Robbie Grimes, who just um, left a position in uh, Wayne Township and is now the, um, he's got a long title here, um, client engagement specialist, and he is also the co-founder of Standard for Success. And then he also teaches middle school science um, with the Achieve Virtual Academy at uh, Wayne Township. But he is going to be talking about creating your own virtual reality experiences. So I am going to turn the microphone over to Chris King. Good afternoon. Uh, my, like she said, my name is Chris King. Um, this is my first ever experience doing a webinar, so bear with me. I'm going to learn as I go on the fly here. Um, if you want to check out that first picture I have, that was actually a picture of my class this year. 
we spend most of our weeks changing theme to theme. And anytime I have an opportunity to take my kids on a virtual field trip, um, it really adds to the experience for the week. Um, if you look closely, you can see they have their headsets on. I have sit spots on the floor just because uh, with five and six-year-olds, you do from time to time have them wander. And if they start looking around in this virtual reality setting and they start reaching and grabbing for things, if they are sitting in a seat or a chair, it, it can get a little crazy. Um, you can go ahead and switch to our next slide there. So like I said, my name is uh, Chris King. I am a kindergarten teacher. I've taught kindergarten for 12 years, six of which have been in the Delphi School Corporation. Uh, we got our virtual reality kit roughly three years ago, and I've used it every year since. Um, ever since I was at Purdue University, I've loved anything that has to do with technology, every opportunity that I could have for it in my classroom. I've used it, um, everything from Flipgrid to regular websites to Boom Learning, um, just lots of different opportunities for our kids to have with our one-to-one -one Chromebook. Um, you could probably go to that next slide for me. And what I want to go over today, you know, just kind of the three main points, you know, virtual reality logistics in the classroom. Um, as you can see from the picture of my room, I have a pretty large classroom and I actually have two classrooms that size with a half wall in the middle. The other thing I wanna to talk to you about is how you can make those connections across different subject areas. In kindergarten, we really focus on it more for just the overall experience and it does influence a few of the things we do in the classroom, but as a you know, fourth or fifth grade teacher, you could probably really tie a lot of stuff into just one experience for them. And then I also put on here uh, the potential expeditions and then some of the ones that we have used in the past and that we will continue to use throughout this year. So if we can get through all those three things in my 15 minutes here, that'll be great for me. Um, as a kindergarten teacher, I have my own visual timer here, so hopefully I don't run out of time. We can go to our go to that next slide where we can talk about some of those logistics. Um, so when the first time I had virtual reality presented to me, I kind of had a panic mode. I'm like, oh my goodness, these kids, they don't know how to, you know, manipulate a phone. They don't know how to get into the app. They don't know where to go. Um, since that time, the kids come to school with more technology skills sometimes than I have, and they will teach me about things. Um, as far as in the classroom, you know, you want to make sure that you have lots of hands um, as far as being able to help. We are very fortunate in the fact that we have classroom aides in our kindergarten room, so I have trained all the aides on how to um, set up the app, choose the right expedition that we will be going on, putting them in the headsets, and then actually, you know, getting all of them passed out and ready to go for the kids. Um, if you want to, you could probably go to that next slide as well. Those logistics, you know, it, it really took a trial and error the first time to see what worked well for my class. The first time I ever did it, I had them sitting in their seats at their tables and it's just so overwhelming for them to look 360 degrees around, north, south, everywhere. They, they were bumping each other's heads. They were leaning out of their seats. You will have kids fall out of their seats from time to time. Um, but it, 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 it was really good hands-on learning the first time and then the next time it went so much smoother. So if you have the opportunity to do it and it, it bombs the very first time you do it, do not feel like, oh, I can't do it ever again, because mine bombed the first time and I still love doing it. Um, you want to make sure that you're going to have enough time to do it. You need to figure at least 30 to 60 seconds for every place that you go just for the ooh and ah factor. Um, because You're going to need that amount of time to get them calmed down in between transitions of different places you're going to go. And you'll understand that more as you kind of see the different pictures that we do. Um, I've already kind of talked about the setup and the spacing and expectations. So as far as putting it into work in a classroom, those are the real big three things you want to think about. Um, if you have any questions, you'll feel free to definitely drop them in the chat line there and I can answer those for you. Otherwise, we can probably go ahead and go on to that next slide. Okay, there you go. Any questions or concerns? See, I knew what I was doing. You can probably hit that next slide too if you want. Now here's, this is the kind of the area where I kind of struggled as far as what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, you know, like I said, I've taught kindergarten for 12 years. 
I have never taught another grade level. My wife teaches second grade. She's taught fourth grade and fifth grade. And so I kind of spoke with her a little bit about what she thought about doing, and she is actually um, going to be putting virtual reality into her classroom here very soon, she says. So if we go ahead and flip, fly, or flip over the next slide, it actually, I'm going to break it down by different subject areas. Um, so like I have listed here, you know, math, reading, writing, social studies, and science, those are the big five that I really wanted to connect to. Um, as far as math goes, there aren't a whole lot of connections when it comes to, you know, actually you know, doing arithmetic. But when it comes to just exposing them to ideas and thoughts and where they can apply math in the real world, two of the expeditions that I really like, um, one is called Math and Structures. And this expedition actually goes and it has photographs of different, you know, structures around the world and how you can find shapes in them. So when it comes to, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, as you're doing those geometry lessons, you can kind of have them be looking for, well, you look, you, you know, you've got a triangle and a rectangle to build this shape. You know, those kind of conversations, even in a more in-depth as far as, you know, fourth and fifth grade, you know, how, how are these going to help be stable areas? How are they going to, or stable structures? Um, and then the other one that was a lot of fun was the NASA Connection. This is an expedition that goes all the way from Houston, Texas, to um, they had Cape Canaveral in this one. They also had some of the International Space Station with this one. And it's just kind of a tie in how important, you know, math was for those individuals to be successful and to become actual astronauts. Um, jumping over to reading, these field trips, the amount of background knowledge that they can acquire from it. It's just absolutely amazing to just broaden that schema so that whenever you're trying to have them really dive into material, they can have the ability to talk about what they're reading, all the different vocab that they might use. Uh, writing kind of goes along in that way too. For kindergarten, the virtual reality is my favorite part with writing. Whenever we finish, we always take some time to reflect and we do a think sheet. And in that think sheet, they will draw pictures of, they will write about, they will label whatever it is that they saw on these field trips. Um, just recently, you know, I'll, I'll show you in just a moment, we took a field trip to the Arctic and we were talking about polar bears. And they went from digging polar bears where these super fluffy white bears to how they would spar and where you could find them and the way that different scientists observe them and tourists observe them. Um, so their drawings that they actually did were really, really cool off of that field trip. Um, as far as social studies go, again, those potential expeditions, they lead you to places where you would not be easily accessible from, you know, wherever you might be. For example, I'm in, you know, northwest Indiana. There's not really much of an opportunity for us to go to the Arctic, to us to go, for us to go to um, even some of the museums that are around the United States. One of my favorite expeditions that we go on is to the San Diego Zoo. You know, not an opportunity that most students in my class will ever have, you know, now, much less in their lifetime. but being able to go on there and see the different animals and see the exhibits and the way that the handlers, you know, interact with the animals is very, very cool. Um, and then that kind of, again, ties into that science. There's everything from animals, the human body you can dive into, the different museums. Um, they, the Google Expedition app itself has a fantastic just search genre that you can start sorting through to be able to find the things that you would want. Um, you could probably go on to that next slide. I think otherwise I might run out of time here. Um, and so again, so here is an example of one of the expeditions and what it looks like from the guide's point of view. So as the teacher, you would actually have an iPad that goes along with what the children are seeing. Um, the center there is a picture that is uh, two polar bears that are actually sparring. Whenever you would click on one of these screens, it will highlight that picture. And the cool thing is when it brings that picture up, it actually puts an arrow up on the children's view and they are to shake their or move their head towards where that arrow is pointing, and that picture will blow up real big, and then they can see it up close and personal as far as what is happening far away in the picture. Now, the nice thing is, as a teacher, you know, they think we know everything, but we don't always do. They actually give you, it's almost like a, um, a narrative that you can read to go along with each picture. And on that white pop-up screen there, you see there are different spots that you can touch. Each one of those takes you to a different area. On the bottom of that picture, you're going to notice there are the white bars with the black writing underneath it. Those are different stops on this field trip that you would take. So instead of looking at the same picture full of, for a full 20 to 30 minute interaction, 
you're actually going to be taking them to, you know, to five, six, seven different places. And so that's why I say, you know, you would definitely want to allow for that 30 second of ooh and ah time in between. Otherwise, you're really going to lose them. Um, if you want to go ahead and jump to the next slide, I, I put a couple of different expeditions that we will do throughout this year. Um, we typically take one to two weeks and we focus solely on ocean. Um, one of my favorite things about this is, you know, any classroom you're going to have, you know, your, your, your average student, you're going to have some lower students that don't ha quite have the background knowledge to be able to talk about things. And you're going to have your high students that, you know, if it really piques their interest, they're going to have a ton of background knowledge that you can really go in further with. Um, I highlighted this one because of the beginner questions and the intermediate questions. Um, when we do our ocean week, I tend to spend some time on sharks, and then there's also time where it talks about coral reefs and um, just other parts of the ocean. Um, the really cool thing about this is it, it makes them feel like they are right there. Now, I will say I've had kids where they will say, you know, can I take it off? I'm, I feel like I'm going to see sick. That's a totally normal thing, and that's one of those things where, you know, as they see fit, I just tell them they can lift the mask up, kind of look around, and get their bearings, and when they're ready, they can pull it back down to go back into it. Um, these are really, really cool expeditions for them to go to. So, that again, that's what we do whenever we do our ocean week or our, our two weeks of ocean. There's a lot of different places that you can do sharks, and it's more not more than just sharks. It's ocean animals. Um, it is the habitat and the ecosystem. There's, there's a lot of different ways you could use it. Uh, so if you want to click over that next slide then, this is going to be another one. And like I said, this was at San Diego Zoo. Uh, they can see up close and personal those animals. And then, they again, the beginner and intermediate questions are fantastic for this. Um, you should check out the Indianapolis Zoo. I actually, you know, we, we are members of the Indianapolis Zoo. Unfortunately, because of where our school is, it's not very easily accessible to us. Uh, we have a little bit shorter day than everyone because of the way our transportation is set up. But I, if, if I had the way to do it, I would definitely go to the Indianapolis Zoo. I love it. Um, that's, again, that's, that's our San Diego Zoo. Um, if you want to go ahead and flip to the next one, I, I believe I've got another one here uh, coming up with dinosaurs. Yep, there it is. Um, now, this one, again, this is Chicago. This is the Field Museum. When you type in dinosaurs, there are, I want to say, six, seven, eight different museums that you can go to. Um, they don't normally have these field trips or these virtual route experiences where it, it is uh, pictures of the dinosaurs and things like that, where you might think, oh, we're going to go, you know, check out what it was like back in that day. This is actually, they're going to see the dinosaur bones and the exhibits in the museums that go along with it. Now, in that, they would actually have pieces that you could highlight and click on that would take you through all those different things. Um, oh, I see from Pop. Gotcha. Okay, I understand, Robbie. Thank you. Um, and then if you want to go ahead and click to our next one, this should time up perfectly. So this is one of probably my favorite one we do all year. We, we take a field trip to an apple orchard, and the farmer there, he actually has his own bees, and he does a huge demonstration with the bees. Well, by the time we get back from that, they are so amped up to talk about the bees, they kind of forget that we were at the apple orchard. So when we dive into this field trip, they they just absolutely go bonkers for it. But again, if you see where I've kind of circled here and highlighted in red, that's one of those things when you touch that, it'll actually zoom in and it'll take you straight up to where that picture is so they get an up close and personal experience with the bees. So if you want to click to the next one there. Um, and then this is kind of, you know, you know, if you have any questions, if you you're, you think of something after I'm done, you'll feel free. There's my email. Check it, uh, shoot me an email. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I am a, currently I have a kindergartner who is in my building, as a matter as a matter of fact, and I have a two-year-old. So I'll do my best to get back to you, uh, but definitely feel free to drop me a line anytime you'd like. And my visual timer says I have one minute, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out and send it back to Mary. Good job. Congratulations on surviving your first webinar presentation. That was awesome. Thank you. Wasn't rushed at all. Good. All right. Well, we will now move from the littles to the bigs, and we will um, turn the mic over to Sarah. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Um, so again, my name is Sarah Wilking. I am the virtual and blended learning specialist um, in Wayne Township on the west side of Indianapolis. Um, before I took this position, I was a high school biology teacher and uh, was in the classroom for 12 years and definitely used this type of technology in my classroom. So 
Um, I just want to give you a couple of ideas on uh, things that we have been using in our secondary classrooms um, across all the different subject areas. So if we go to the next slide, Mary. So the, the biggest use of our virtual reality kits, um, we use Google Expeditions. And our virtual reality kits um, really are primarily virtual reality. So Google Expeditions also has that ability to do the augmented reality. Our phones and our kits don't have the AR core ability. So we, we focus on the virtual reality for, um, for most of our trips. So some examples of, of ways that we use this in the secondary classroom. So the traditional way is that teacher-led expedition where we load the, the trip on our tablet and that's where our teacher controls everything from and is controlling what those students are seeing in their headsets. So we have um, our headsets are the Viewmaster um, variety. And so they don't um, have that. They don't connect to the head, right? So they're not going to be um, a headset where it stays on their head. They're able to take it down. And for us, that's going to allow our teachers to do a little bit with that teaching um, kind of component uh, where they can look at something in the, in the field trip. And then they're going to be, the students are going to be able to put that down and do some writing or view a video um, type of thing. So some examples uh, of what we've done, our social studies department across our secondary buildings, I think are by far the, the greatest user of our virtual reality kits. So um, we've had some World War I trench warfare type of uh, VR trips. So there's a couple of those available in Google Expeditions where our teachers um, took them through what it was like in the trenches and then had students um, on paper go through that information. So labeling, what does that soldier look like? Um, a typical, that typical World War I soldier and what did that, um, how did those images make you feel kind of thing. So there's, they're bringing in that writing component to the virtual field trip. We had um, another social studies um, teachers that took students through the Tenement Museum in New York City. So they got to see what it looked like in that time period when they were living in those tenements. And um, they even have that museum has an example of exactly what those tenements looked like, a building that had not actually been touched. Uh, and they were able to use that for that museum. So our students really liked that. During the refugee crisis, um, which is still ongoing, but we've had some uh, teachers that took their students through those refugee camps um, using the Google Expeditions. So those were really neat. Um, as a science teacher, one um, thing that was very hard for my students to understand in process was the size of a cell and then the pieces inside of the cell. So there are a couple of really good cell uh, Google Expedition, so cell parts, and where our students can actually go and see the relative size of the plant cell versus the animal cell or a bacterial cell. And then we can go inside of those and actually see the parts. And so they're getting to see a little bit more of kind of how everything fits together in that microscopic world that they're not used to seeing. So that one, um, I'm always a big fan of those cell part ones when I get to be in the classroom with the teachers when they're doing that. But I think one of my favorite um, uses of Google Expeditions in the traditional teacher-led sense was actually in a math classroom. And it's, I, it's not a typical way that we have been using it. Um, I haven't gotten a lot of math teachers on board with Google Expeditions. They have to be willing to kind of think outside the box. So um, I was in the seventh and eighth grade math classroom and uh, the teacher was getting ready to take a trip to the Grand Canyon. And so she designed a lesson around relative distance um, and relative size and had her students kind of plan out her trip to the Grand Canyon. And then they were just, you know, they were discussing um, this, you know, the length of the river through the Grand Canyon compared to the distance uh, from Indianapolis to Chicago. And so it was a very interesting way of incorporating math using Google Expeditions that I, that I hadn't seen used before. And it was so much fun. And the students absolutely loved it because they're not used to using virtual reality in a math classroom. So it was really outside the box for those students. 
Um, another thing that, um, another way that we've been using the Expeditions app on our devices is actually, instead of doing the teacher-led traditional expeditions, um, we've been using a little bit of station rotation with our devices. To do that, instead of having uh, the, the field trip downloaded onto the tablet and then the teacher controlling it, uh, it takes a little bit more work on the back end. We actually have to uh, download the expedition on every single phone or every single device that you have, and then set up those, those phones at each station to what you want them to be at. So we've done this several times with a lot of success, and the students really like you know, seeing more. They're getting to experience more of those expeditions in a class period than um, just that one that they're spending the whole time in. So some examples of what we've done with that. Um, in the world language department, um, I've had a French teacher that wanted um, his students to see the architecture um, throughout Paris and other parts of France. And so what we were able to do is we loaded two different expeditions on the devices and set up a rotation kind of where they went and they were looking at specific landmarks um, at each station and then had a writing prompt for each one of those that they were going to write about that architecture. So um, that was a fun one. They got to see more of the architecture. Um, uh, when it's the student-led expedition, um, a lot of the expeditions have an audio component. So they, they have that audio where if you have a student who is um, maybe a slower reader or maybe you have an English language learner, they're going to be able to, be, to listen to that audio um, as long as you have the volume turned up on there. Um, otherwise, they're going to have to read all of that information that the teacher would typically have on their tablet. So um, we, we also use the audio for those students, um, especially in um, our English language learning uh, types of class situations. So another example was the same World War I trench warfare type of expedition that um, we used with the teacher led, but instead we, we did two other. So there were three total expeditions and the students were in a three station rotation and were able to see a bunch of different parts uh, about World War I. And then my uh, favorite station rotation is by far, um, we have an ENL teacher um, in one of our buildings who was able to find expeditions or um, the, the created ones in the Poly website um, that I'm sure that Robbie will talk about later, um, that she was able to find these field trips for the students' home countries. So she, we were able to find almost all of the countries that those students were from and set up stations for those countries. And then all students were rotating around and then um, they were using their newly acquired vocabulary and writing about what they saw in those countries and comparing them to their own home, com own home countries. So that way we could get that kind of compare and contrast writing um, experience and all of that vocabulary. So that was, I really, really liked the use of that. The other thing that Google Expeditions will allow is that AR function. Like I said, most of our phones um, do not, do not um, have the AR core ability. So we can't use the AR portion of Google Expeditions. Um, but it is, a, it is a possibility. So if you have the newer phones, then you can do that. We actually have used it in our health class um, with some body systems. That was kind of cool. So and we'll move on, Mary, to the next slide. And we'll talk about another way that we use virtual reality. And I absolutely love this one. This is a different app. This is not using Google Expeditions. This is using an app called You Visit Colleges. It's free. Um, and we have used this a couple of different ways in our buildings. So what you see that picture there of those students, this is from a business class. We were doing um, these college visits in small groups. Um, they were working on some college um, and career kinds of projects. And so we would take small groups out in the hallway and then they get to choose the colleges that they visit. So these are self-guided tours. Um, I would just, as the students came out, I would load, uh, load the particular um, college that they wanted to visit. 
you visit college is awesome because it has almost every college that you can imagine that these students would want to visit. It had Ivy Tech for students that wanted to stay local. Um, we were visiting Florida State and we were going out to Harvard and these students were going, you know, all these really cool places that they probably weren't going to be able to go on an actual college visit um, to see. So they're getting an idea of what kind of colleges they do want to go to. So this was in an individual business classroom where we did this small group kind of trips. The other way we use this um, was during College Go Week. And so um, I was in a building all day doing these college tours for students. Um, they were actually middle schoolers that were getting an idea of what colleges they wanted to visit um, or even think about in middle school so that when they get to, to high school, they're getting ready for those. So we were able to visit a lot of really neat ones. In that case, we all visited the same colleges at the same time. And we had different time periods through the day that we were doing different college um, visits. So just another way that you can use that those virtual reality uh, kits without having to use Google Expedition. So this was a cool one. I did have to download the app onto every single phone and then um, load those college, individually load those college visits. So it takes a little more work on the back end than the Google Expeditions app, but it's definitely worth the time. Okay, next slide. And then Tour Creator. I know Robbie's probably, he's gonna get into this a lot more, but we are using this um, in our secondary buildings and we're using it two ways. Um, Tour Creator is a way that we can create our own um, these, you know, expedition type of, uh, field trips. And, um, I've had teachers create them for students to view. So this is a picture actually of a classroom where this happened. Um, we had some English teachers that created these field trips based on the books that their students were reading to try to give them a better visual of where these were taking place. So I had, um, uh, teachers that were teaching um, the novel A Thousand Splendid Sons. And so they created um, a virtual field trip uh, in Afghanistan. So of different places in Afghanistan that it talks about in the book. Um, and then we also had another group of um, English teachers that were teaching the, the novel, the, thing, the things they carried. And so they created a field trip over Vietnam. And so it was really just a way for teachers to give that visual of what was happening in the novels um, that their students probably just weren't able to come up with on their own. And the students then said it made it much um, that it made those scenes come more alive in their minds after they um, had been through the field trip and they were reading again in that novel. So then they were able to really picture what was happening um, as they were reading. So that was a cool one. The other way that it's being used, uh, we do have some secondary teachers that are having their students create their own tours. Um, instead of doing a slides presentation or um, those typical types of um, projects that we're used to doing, uh, they're actually creating their own. So I know Rob, you'll get into more about how that works, um, but I did want to sh kind of share that it is being used by students as well um, to create those, those tour types of projects. So I think um, the next thing is just a logistics thing. So if we go to the next slide, Mary, this is really just a planning kind of thing. So um, whether you are a single person with a single kit, or in our case, we have our three main virtual reality kits in our district um, that uh, we use. And so we need to be able to kind of plan and organize what's happening. And we do that all through Google Calendar. Um, and kind of set that up. So I can't take credit for this. This was something that Robbie worked on. Um, and, but this is how we're kind of organizing that, those, those kits and where there are and what we're doing. So, um, when a teacher wants to do an expedition, we create a calendar event and, in that calendar event, we, we invite the teacher. We actually have calendars for our kits that were um, created at the district level. And so we always create within that calendar. 
invite the teacher. And then we also give that teacher modifying event rights for that particular event and ask them some questions. Classes when I'm bringing the kits into the classroom, because if they have more than 30 students, I need to make sure I have some extra devices headsets so that we can accommodate as many students as possible. Um, and then I also want to know what expedition so I can get that loaded ahead of time. But then we also want to know what they're doing with that, um, what kind of learning they're doing. Uh, so that way we have a running kind of um, agenda kind of thing of knowing what we're using them for. Um, we want to know how that's really being tied into the curriculum. And so this is a way that we kind of keep control or kind of check um, what's happening with our, with our kids. So I just wanted to show that a little bit of the back end for that planning and organization that happens. And we use this across all grade levels. This is not just a secondary thing, but just something unique that we're doing that I wanted to make sure that we shared out. But it looks like I am out of, I'm out of time. Um, but if you have questions, uh, I, my Twitter handle is there. Um, I uh, can also share out my email address as well if you have any questions about how we're using this at the secondary level. I'll throw it back to Mary now. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, great stuff. And um, yeah, I like how you said that just because you're talking about secondary, it's stuff that can still be done um, at the lower levels. And the same with you know some of the things that Chris was talking about. Um, it definitely crosses grade levels. So now I'm going to turn, I'm actually going to make Robbie the presenter and turn the presentation and mic to him. And hopefully this will go smoothly. Can you see, can you see my screen? I do, yep. All right, so um, I, uh, my name is Robbie Grimes. Um, I, I usually quickly go into saying I'm the e-learning specialist at Wayne Township Schools, but um, that role for me ended about um, five days ago. Um, and I'm now currently a client engagement specialist and co-founder for Standard for Success, teacher evaluation and employee evaluation tool. Um, but I'm still very involved in um, augmented reality and virtual reality and um, in my mind, at least. I know my job's just kind of changing, but um, forgive me for like some of the technical issues I've had today, uh, this morning or today because of uh, I'm sitting in my new office that's only been like really put together the last day or so. So kind of weird. I'm getting ready um, for all of this uh, new transition. So anyway, um, I do want to talk to you a little bit about um, how this, um, this will work. So um, let's jump right in because honestly, uh, a tour creator um, uh, uh, kind of training can take a very long time. So I'm going to very quickly go through this, um, but please don't discount the fact that you can go online and go to YouTube and find out um, step by step how to do this and someone will show you on video how to do this. So. Um, when you go to uh, just do a, a Google search for tour creator and it'll come up. Otherwise, you can put arvr.google.com slash tour creator and it will take you to this screen right here. Um, what you have to realize is that it's best to have the imagery that you're going to use um, together first on your machine. You cannot get um, the uh, images from your Google Drive into Google Tour Creator. They have to, it doesn't allow you to access Google Drive. So you need to have those images on your uh, desktop or on your hard drive somewhere. Um, and the way you can get those is um, right here, a couple of links that I'm going to talk about today, but this uh, is a shortened Amazon link to a uh, a camera that I've used quite significantly called the Ricoh Theta SC um, uh, camera. And you are um, welcome to go out and take, take a look at one of these. Also, another one uh, example that I've used is called an Insta360 uh, um, 1X camera. Um, this camera right here, this Ricoh Theta is about $200. Um, you can also take pictures um, from your cell phone. You can use the, the Google Cardboard app um, or the Google Street View app and take pictures yourself. And how to do that is all, also all available on YouTube if you want to figure out how to do that as well. Just do a, a YouTube search for how to take a 360, take 360 pictures, um, sphere, uh, photosphere pictures with my cell phone or something like that, and it'll show you how to do that or how to use Google Cardboard. So once you get your images, um, I'll show you here that I've got um, my images um, on my, well, whoops. I have my images on my desktop right here of uh, this Trader's Point Creamery. This is what I'm going to use um, for my imagery when I'm showing you how to do this today. So this is one of the trips that I took when I was um, uh, putting, the, when I'm putting these together. Um, I could take all of these pictures and put them together. So anyway, let's let's look at uh, Tour Creator. And I'm going to go in here and just click Get Started. 
And just like most things um, dealing with Google, um, they've very they've made it very easy. The user interface is incredibly easy. Um, these are some of the different um, tours that I've created. Um, one of to Porter Cave. Here's Ray's Recycling, Fox 59 Studios, um, and then even the Indianapolis Airport Fire Station. And Chris, as I was talking to you about the Indianapolis um, Zoo, that was the first one that I created with a couple of friends of mine, Kyle Bimefor and um, Kyle Klein in uh, Zionsville and Delphi. So um, I'm going to very quickly just show you how this works. Um, you will see that it is very easy um, and simple. However, the steps, like I said, can be found in YouTube. So I'm going to click up here and click on new tour. First thing I come to is here and it's going to ask you for a title. So I'm going to call this uh, my um, uh, dairy field trip. All right, so cover photo over here on the left hand side, you have to select an image. You cannot publish this and let it be viewable by the general public unless you have a cover photo. I'm not going to put one on right now just because uh, for the lack of time. So I'm not going to use that right now, but um, I'm going to leave that empty. But this description right here, this description is what shows up um, when you look up these uh, Google expeditions in the Poly website that I'll show you in just a moment. Um, and ultimately, when you are looking at the expeditions sheet that is right here. And I will show you the link uh, to this as well. But this is a comprehensive list of all of the Google expeditions that Google has available within uh, the Google Expeditions app. When you publish yours, it will not be added here. You may be contacted by Google to actually add it here, but uh, they're not added right here. They're actually added to a, a site called poly.google.com. Um, but all of the VR and AR, if you look at the tab down here in the bottom left, VR and AR expeditions are listed right here. Um, make sure that you're on the correct tab as you're looking, because if you don't have the capability and your devices don't have the capability to do AR, you're going to want to make sure you're looking at VR because you'll be sorely um, uh, displeased as you take a look through and um, at, a, at an AR when you're, when you're hoping for VR, um, virtual reality versus augmented reality. So here's my, uh, my dairy field trip. I'm going to go ahead and just click create. And the first place it takes you is to add your first scene. As you're creating uh, uh, Google Expeditions, you are adding scenes and each scene is a 360 photosphere or um, the, the 360 degree view that you'll use the goggles for. You have the ability to either do street view and use street view images that are already out there and available publicly um, for you to select, or you can go to upload and upload your own. So what I'll do right here is I'll just go here and do look up for Indianapolis, um, Indiana, and it automatically places me here, right here on the circle. And you can see here, I can scroll around and look at these street view images. Um, I can, if I don't like that particular one, I can move to a different location like this. And it works just like Street View does, if you're familiar with how Street View works. And here is a newer view. And you can see this is kind of Christmas time when they did this. The, the, um, the monument is, uh, has, the, has the tree set up on it. So if I like this one, and I like this particular scene, I can go anywhere on the globe where they have Street View. I can just click Add Scene down here in the bottom right. When I click Add Scene, it automatically gets added to my scene right here. Or sorry, to my uh, expedition. So now I've got this here. Let me now go back and show you how um, to upload your own once you've created your own. So what you would do if you wanted to create more, like let's say you want to do a tour of, of Indianapolis and you want to create your own or you want your students to create their own. All they have to do is go to add scene. And from here, they can go to street view, go to Indianapolis. And um, when they go to search, search more, then they can add their own um, scenes uh, within the, the tool itself. However, if you want to create, uh, create your own, if you've got your own 360 images, you can click on upload. And remember, I said those images have to be on your hard, on your hard drive. It cannot go be in Google Drive. So what I'm going to do is select um, a 360 image using this tool that's right here. It should pull this up. I'm going to go to my desktop. Here's my Traders Point Creamery um, folder. I'm going to go into my 360 folder because I've put my 360 images in here. And I'm going to go into the milking parlor. Once I go into the milking parlor, I, I, I grab that image and pull it in here like, like this. It looks very flat and kind of um, fish eye-ish. Um, that's perfectly fine. I can rotate it up here. I can delete it and change it back. I'm going to click Add Scene. Once I do, it has added it now as a scene within um, my expedition that I'm creating. Now you can see that there are a couple of cows here in the, in, uh, the Trader's Point milking parlor. And um, they are uh, taking their, the milk from the udders with the machines and pulling them all the milk into these little canisters that are right here. Up here on the right hand side, let me focus your attention over here and I'm going to call this 
milking parlor. Now, this title right here is what's going to show up in Google Expeditions when you uh, are looking at the titles of all the scenes. I can put an or location here if you want to, put a description here if you want to. You've only got 500 words right here, but this description is what teachers are going to use when they are using this expedition to teach their students. This is all the facts. This right here is the hardest part of making these. The easy part is taking a field trip and taking pictures. Once you get all your pictures and, 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 and they're done, it's fantastic and easy to do that part. Then you've got to come back and you have to put these together here. Put your credits here if you need to. You can add audio. Sorry, um, like uploading files, you can also record narration if you'd like to. But one of the coolest parts, um, and I think Chris talked about it, was the uh, the pop outs or the large pictures that you can show. Um, and those are called points of interest. So if you go, <coughs> excuse me, if you go here on the bottom right hand side and click add point of interest, and click right here and notice that this little blue dot showed up and I can move this around. And I'll, um, I know the picture I'm going to put right here is actually of these um, these tools that are right here that are used to to milk the cows. and once I'm in here in the in untitled point of interest, I'm going to go here and change the title here to, um, I honestly don't remember what the title of these are called. Um, milking tools, for a lack of a better term. Um, I'm going to add an image overlay. When I go out here, I'm going to select an image, and you can click and drag, but I'm going to go down here and select an image, and go to desktop, uh, Trader's Point, and I've got my points of interest images right here. And here is the milking machine. And it is uploading it automatically to my expedition. Once I've clicked add, it then pulls it in here like this. And I can go over here then add, add a description. Milking machines are used, blah, 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 blah. You can put whatever the, the text is that you want to on this point of interest. You have 50 um, characters you can use for this. But I then can resize this if I want to. Um, but you can now see close up um, that, uh, that tool that's used and the machine that's used to, uh, to milk the cows. When I'm done with this particular one, I can add six or seven, eight, nine, ten, however many points of interest I want to. If I move around here, I could kind of talk about what these canisters are, what the farmer right here is doing. Um, why the cows are talk about a little bit about why the cows are up like this. I can just add a point of interest like this and not have a pop out, but I could just talk about what this machine is right here. I do by just putting it on top of this machine right here. Um, the other thing I forgot to tell you about is you can add a starting view. So if I click the starting view on the bottom left, what this does is it allows me to um, start the image for the student where you want it to start versus just kind of plopping them in here. Like I may not want it to start like this because Kind of what is this idea? If the whole thing of, of this is the um, this particular one is the milking parlor, I'm going to want to really focus their attention on that. So I'm going to go like this and click save, and now that is the image that's going to come up for your students when they first get into the into the uh, expedition. I'm going to go into um, now into add scene, and um, I'm going to choose another 360 image. This time I'm going to use um, the. I think I'm going to go into the cheese cave. Cheese cave is what they use to um, age the cheese. I'll click add right here and see, I'll set my starting view of right there. Click save. Go up here. Call this the cheese cave. I would put a location, description, some credits, audio if I want to. I'll add a point of interest. I already know what this one is going to be. As I pull these images together. Going to here, got my cheese wheel. Uh oh, really I should have not clicked add. I should have rotated that a little bit because it was it's sideways. Um, I don't think I can edit this now, but I would have turned this sideways. But anyway, this is the um, the the cheese wheel. Do this and go ahead and put this back in here the right way. There we go. 
and I'll talk about the cheese wheel right here. Put my information in here like this, and I'm going to add one more scene. So I'll go in really quickly. <laughs> add my one more scene. And this is um, the restaurant that is at Trader's Point Creamery. At this scene, and I'm not going to put any um, points of interest in this one. Um, you can see actually the the cheese cave right here. I may have I may go ahead like this and um, I may go ahead like this and put a point of interest um, here where. Uh, it, it just is here and just talk about this is the cheese cave. This is where it is. You can see it. it it's listed right here. You can see that. Okay. So now I'm finished doing all that. You can see um, how maybe not how easy, but how simple it is um, to go through and call and add all of your scenes. Once you get finished with all of your scenes, you then want to do something with this. You want your students to see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and publish it. It's missing a, a photo. So clearly I'm going to, before I can publish it, I'm going to have to go out here and put it. Uh, I'm gonna have to go out here and put a um, a cover photo in here. So I'm gonna just select one of these still images right here. So I've got one on here, so you guys can see how this works. So I'll use. Stutter's image. This is my cover photo. When I get finished, I can click the publish button and I can make this public or, or unlisted. Unlisted means you can't find it when you look at poly.google.com. Public means that if you do a search, you can find it. So I'm going to leave this um, at public and publish. So now my, um, my expedition that I created is now my virtual field trip is now published to the poly website at poly.google.com. Um, that website now is right here. And when you get to this website, there's all kinds of other stuff um, that you can actually um, find on this website. But what I'm going to do is go right here and I'm going to look for my dairy and I'm hoping it's published already. And I don't see it yet. Anyway, it's not, it hasn't been published. But what happens is, um, uh, you get once you get it published, and it, it takes clearly a couple of minutes for that to happen. But this one right here is one that I created for the Indianapolis Zoo. Once you get it published, it's out here for you to view. Um, you can view these this uh, um, right like this on Chromebooks, uh, laptops, tablets, whatever. Um, here are the three guys, the other two guys who helped me um, create um, this Indianapolis um, uh, Zoo field trip. I can go full screen like this. Students can do this as well. And they can scroll around and you can see um, as I've put this together, these little circles, those are little points of interest. When I click on them, it pulls up the the, uh, the image right here. And you can see down here, here is this is a hyacinth in the call and it's got the information. Like I said, the titles and the, the text are really the, the hard part of doing this. Um, but I can scroll through this just like this and see that here's one, um, an image of, of one of the penguins at the zoo. The, the zookeepers actually allow, um, took the our cameras back into the exhibits. We took some of the pictures for us. And we have um, got some really close up imagery of, our, of the animals. Um, but um, what I want to uh, point out to you is if you then want to get this to your students on those on your goggles, what you have to do is you have to be logged into poly.google.com with your with your Google account that you're going to use as the teacher on the teacher tablet in Google Expeditions. If you are like, let's say, for instance, this is my Robbie Grimes five at gmail.com. This is my Google account that I'm using to get with to use poly.google.com. If I go with this account and I go to down here and I like this, it tells me that it works with expeditions. It tells me it gives me information about what I'm actually telling you about. When I click got it, as long as I've liked this right here. Now, when I go into uh, Google Expeditions on the tablet that I'm going to use to guide the expedition, if I use that app and I go into the library and I go to my expeditions, I think it's called my expeditions. Um, if, if I go into the library that's in that app and I'm logged into my same account that I liked this with, then this one will show up. I can then download this one to the Google expeditions 
app on my tablet and then use it just like any of the other Google Expeditions that are out there on the Google Expeditions uh, spreadsheet site. So that's how you get them from Poly um, Google into Google Expeditions, the app, so your students can actually watch them. But if you don't have access to an actual actual goggles or anything like that, you can just have your students use the Poly website and, and view some of them. Now, not all of the Google Expeditions that are on this spreadsheet right here. Uh, well, not that. Um, uh, here, sorry. Not all of the expeditions that are listed in this comprehensive list are in Poly. Some of them are, some of the real popular ones are, but not all of them are. So if you are interested in using the ones that are here, um, they'll be in Google Expeditions. But if you want to use the ones that are in Poly, you'd have to use Poly, but not all of them um, are there. So if you don't have goggles, you're not going to, and, and can't have access to the, the app, um, some of the touchscreen uh, Chromebooks that are available right now, you can, you can use those touchscreen Chromebooks to be able to use Android apps if, you, if your administrators have set it up, if your Google administration has set that up for you, you will be able to do that. Now, when Sarah was talking about using um, Tour Creator uh, with your students, you also need to make sure that you have your uh, Google admin go in and enable Tour Creator for your users. It's not turned on by default. So you'll need to make sure that that gets turned on by your Google administrators. Otherwise, your teachers and or students will not be able to access Tour Creator um, within their tool because it's not one of the G Suite, to, the, um, the uh, default G Suite tools. So they'll have to go in and do that. So um, that's Tour Creator and that's Poly. Um, I've also shown you this um, expedition site, but I also wanna show you very quickly the TES website. This, um, this TES website, um, TES is a, is a, a, a really good resource um, in its own right, but it also has um, lists of lessons and lesson plans that are dovetailed with some Google expeditions, like this digestive system one. I went to the TES website and just did a, a search for Google expeditions, but you could do a digestive system and then hashtag Google expeditions and it will pull just this one up. But some of these are free. And when you click on them, you're able to then go in and look at the lesson and also see that this goes along with one of the Google expeditions that actually exists. I was speaking at a conference at FETC in Florida and actually used the, uh, the moon expedition um, uh, within my lesson, within my lesson that I was teaching at the, at the um, conference that I was speaking at. And I used the expedition as well as the lesson um, together in my, in my uh, workshop that I was doing at, at the at FETC workshop. So um, those links actually are right here. If you want the Google Expedition spreadsheet, you can copy this bitly down. Um, make sure you're aware of up, uppercase and lowercase, um, as well as the TES website. And you can uh, take those links and it'll take you to them and then you can bookmark them yourself however you want to. But I think, uh, I think Mary has put in the chat window um, the links, some of the links the, to the, I saw the Rico Theta link in there as well, but you're welcome to take those. Um, but that is a very quick 15 or 20 minute um, uh, overview of Tour Creator, um, the Poly Google website, how you can make your own and publish them, and then also how you can use, make, uh, take your camera and use that your, the, yourself. So let me uh, stop sharing and let me see if there are any questions or anything like that. No questions have come in. Thank you so much. Yes, I um, copied all of the, your, the three uh, URLs that you shared Great. and um, put those in the chat so that everybody should have those. So, and it is five o'clock. Um, we got so much great information um, that was a packed hour of learning. So thank you to Chris and Sarah and Robbie um, for the time that you spent in preparing and the time that you spent in sharing with us today. And um, like I said, I have recorded the webinar um, and we'll have that posted next week and everybody will get their PGP email um, sometime this week and um, hope to see you all in the book club or in a future webinar. Thank you guys very much. Have a great Tuesday evening.